Docker Desktop was a classic and still is a classic tool for Windows and Mac OS users to install Docker and run Docker containers on their local machine. It replaced uh, recently Docker Engine, consolidating a lot of the Docker tools together into a graphical interface, the command line tools, and all the other uh, sub and related projects that Docker ships with, like Docker Compose, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There were some recent changes to the way that Docker Desktop was monetized, and this upset quite a lot of hobbyists. Um, I don't know, if you're an individual developer, it didn't really affect you so much, but it affected lots of developers inside of companies. And generally, people just don't like it when things change, especially when that changes things like pricing, i.e. there wasn't any before, and now there is. In this video, I'm gonna take a look at some alternatives for running Docker, primarily on Mac, but some of them, of course, will apply on all operating systems. So, let's get started. Before we look at the alternatives, it's probably a good idea to have a quick look at Docker Desktop itself to see what we're comparing to. There is a homebrew formula available, or of course you can just install from the website, and then you open up the visual GUI. It also just has command line commands that have been installed alongside it, but uh, this is kind of mostly what we're gonna to compare to. There's quite a lot of settings about the viewage and telemetry, the resources you want to share between the host and the guest system, uh, Docker engine customizations, beta features, I tend to enable most of these, if you want Kubernetes enabled or not. Software updates, I always manage myself through Homebrew, and then extensions, which is a new Docker feature that I haven't tried yet. You could see there's a listing of containers, images, volumes shared, and dev environments, which is a new feature. But we're mostly interested in containers and images for this video, so we go to the command line. If you've ever used Docker before, this will probably be fairly familiar. It's a Docker run with some parameters, ports, and the image you want to use which in this case is the HTTPD server. We can give it a name if we want. This is the name of the container, or you get an auto-generated one. Hit enter, give it. It really depends on the size of the image to download the image. This one is pretty small. Spits out a container ID. And if we go into the browser on the port that was set, then there is the container running. So with a running container, we can now see on the container listing, there it is. Uh, we can jump into a bunch of different options around it, viewing it in a bunch of different ways, in uh, different parameters of it. We can also restart it, jump into the terminal of it here. We can also take a look at the image, dig into some more detail of what's behind that image from the Docker file. And then finally, we can actually delete it. Before I dive into the main alternatives to Docker Desktop, I just want to talk about two others that I tried that didn't really work for me, but one especially might work for you. The first one is VMware Fusion. This can run containers as well as virtual machines, so you can have everything in one place, but it only works on Intel Macs. If you try and run the commands on Apple Silicon Macs, it looks like it's going to work, but it doesn't. You get some errors and then it all fails. The other option is Parallels, sort of. Again, giving you that option to combine virtual machines and containers together. But it's more as a backend for Kubernetes, not just the containers themselves. So I may make a video in the future looking at alternative backends um, for Kubernetes instead of using Docker Desktop or others. But for this video, I excluded those, one because one didn't work and one because it was primarily just for Kubernetes containers, but they may work for you. Podman and Podman Desktop are almost sort of direct replacements for Docker and Docker Desktop. You can install Podman with Homebrew and the commands take basically the same format as the Docker commands, but you use Podman instead of Docker. When you have installed it, you first need to init a machine which downloads a Linux virtual machine and uses Quemu to connect to that virtual machine. And you also need to run podman machine start. So you do need to remember to run that start command unless you 
have it just running all the time, which is not something I generally want, but you might not be so bothered. Setting up this virtual machine can take a little bit of time. It depends on your internet connection and some other things. I did hit some errors once in a while as well. Remove it, start again, and it worked eventually. Once you've done that, then the process is pretty similar. As I say, you need to use Podman instead of Docker, and you do need to specify where the image is coming from because Docker will assume it's coming from the Docker repository, but these other tools don't assume that. So to run the same container we run in the Docker example, you need to put the full path to the image source and run it. Again, using all the same other parameters, we get a container ID. And then if we go to the browser and again, connect to the port we exposed, you should see the container running. Then removing and stopping containers and images, etc., are all the same commands you would use with Docker. But as I said before, instead of using the command Docker, you use the command Podman. Podman does also have its own desktop application, which you can install from a separate homebrew formula or from their website. It looks similar-ish to Docker Desktop. In that you see an overview, you see a list of containers, a list of images, and also some Kubernetes interaction points as well, which I'm not covering here. There's the container that we already have running and some similar inspect, uh, execute in the terminal, etc., etc. commands as well. So here, but the terminal in this case is part of a desktop, not my terminal, and logs, also an overview of the resources it's using. We can also look in the images and similarly uh, see what the Docker file looks like. And this is the pod section for Kubernetes. If you use that, the volumes that are mounted. It's relatively straightforward, not a massive amount to it, but um, has all the basics you would need. The settings, again, are also similar, a little bit differently laid out. You can authenticate with registries. You can use extensions to it. You can also use Docker desktop extensions. Again, I haven't really looked into them yet. And then some more general preferences as well. Kalima is a container runtime that supports Docker and container D as a backend. By default, it uses Docker, which you do need to install as a dependency with whatever method you want. You then need to start the virtual machine which downloads a virtual machine image, a Linux virtual machine image again, and you'll see the progress of it as it downloads. This can take a little bit of time, but then once it's done, you can run Docker commands as normal. There we go. So, so far, not doing anything massively different apart from running those Docker containers in a different image. But where things become more interesting is if you use container D instead of Docker. The easiest way to do this is using Kalima's wrapper command, which then installs nerdctl, which is a tool for interacting with container D. You then restart Kalima using that runtime instead of Docker. And once it's installed all of its dependencies, you can then use familiar Docker commands. But instead of using Docker, you use nerdctl instead. You'll see the output is a bit different. A little bit more visual. You'll also see there are certain flags you can't set with container D. So we have to change some of the arguments you might just be copying and pasting from, from uh, Docker examples a little. But then it works, and it works basically how you'd expect it to work with, with Docker. Another option worth considering is Rancher Desktop from Rancher. It's been around a little while, and like some of the other options, you can use it for Kubernetes and containers. It has a homebrew format available. You can also download it from their website. And similarly to other tools, it wraps several other tools behind the scenes, like Helm, kubectl, and the Docker command itself. Once it's installed, which can take a little bit of time, it also takes a little bit of time to set up downloading virtual machines, depending on what options you select, giving it permissions, et cetera, et cetera. It, it does a good job of describing what all of these will be, but it can take a little bit of time to download everything it needs. With all of that out of the way, let's take a tour of the interface. It will seem fairly familiar from some of the other tools we've looked at so far in this video. So you have a pane for images, an overview screen, a settings section, where well, there's actually quite a lot you could do, but bear in mind, almost every change you make 
involves a restart. You can switch between container D and Docker as an option as well. Port forwarding options, a library of images depending on the runtime you've selected. So I selected container D. I find the interface slightly odd and different from some of the others because it doesn't show you running containers, just images. So it lacks some of the features of some of the other tools, but it can be useful for certain use cases. And looking around their website, I kind of get the impression they're mostly aiming at Kubernetes management and configuration, which makes sense with Rancher's business model. So I think I'll take another look at Rancher when I do a separate roundup on Kubernetes management tools. It feels like with a lot of these, that's really where they are going, to be honest with you. But it's another option if you want some visual interface to some Docker or Containerd features. So I guess the question at the end of this roundup, where I looked at Docker Desktop itself, Podman, Kalima, Rancher Desktop, and then your mileage may vary on VMware Fusion and Parallels Desktop. So the question is always, Chris, what do you use? <laughs> well. I'm glad you asked, and I think I kind of alluded to this maybe throughout the video. I think for now, for me, when I'm doing my own thing, Docker Desktop is, is perfectly fine for my use case. I think I also like the fact that even though it's experimental, I can switch to using the macOS hypervisor, which sort of gives me peak performance at the sacrifice of some features, or switch to the Docker runtime as well. So I will probably stick with that for now. If I was to move from it, then probably, I think I preferred Podman. I think I would switch to Podman. Uh, the Podman desktop, so-so, but the actual sort of tool itself, fair enough. Kalima was also pretty good. To be honest with you, when it came to that moment, I would probably weigh them up again to see what had changed. So that's my wrap up. That's my decision there. Not really a decision, I already made it. <laughs> Let me know what you use in the comments and why. That would be super useful. And if you're interested, I will probably be back in a month or so with a Kubernetes roundup of a similar thing, because we saw already that lots of them already have Kubernetes type features. So it makes sense to maybe look at something similar. And there's some other tools as well, like Lens, which I use for Kubernetes a lot of the time. So I will come back with that. And if you subscribe, you get a notification. If you enjoyed what you saw, please do subscribe, leave a comment, even a thumbs up would be great. And you can find out more about me at kristenchiller.com where you can find all my other projects and output too. So enjoy your container running and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much, everybody.